microtubules and cell motility. Well, microtubule-based motility is predicated on molecular motors that walk along microtubules and in some cases is also predicated on the very dynamic structure or nature of microtubules, in fact, their instability, their ability to assemble and disassemble. And we're going to look at some examples. Let's talk first about motor proteins themselves. Motor proteins are going to require free energy, so they're all, in fact, ATP-fueled. This is an example of a protein that has been studied. It has multiple domains and protein subunits, this is dynein. And we'll see that dynein functions, for example, in cilia and flagella of eukaryotic cells, and also functions as a molecular motor carrying vesicles in a neuron. Here we have fluorescent micrographs of two cells that have been immunostained to detect microtubules on the left or lysosomes on the right, using fluorescent antibody preparations against microtubules and lysosomal proteins, respectively. The micrograph on the left shows microtubules spreading from a high or bright concentration near the nucleus, radiating outwards and into extended cell processes. Fluorescence from lysosomes is also concentrated near the nucleus and is separated into speckled bright spots further from the nucleus, again into cell processes. Lysosomes are not obviously visible in the black spaces in the micrograph on the right. Now all of these observations are consistent with the lysosomes as cargo on motor proteins in microtubules rather than free in the cytoplasm of the cell. In fact, more recent studies co-localize lysosomes along microtubules in a single micrograph, confirming this conclusion. As part of the cytoskeleton, microtubules, and you'll see this is true also of actin and intermediate filaments, not only give a cell shape, but they also function as a kind of scaffold on which various cellular structures and organelles are hung. Dynein, again, is one of these motor proteins. Kinesin is another. We know that one of the key differences between dynein and kinesin, apart, of course, from structure, are that they carry vesicles in opposite directions along microtubules. This is useful in a nerve cell because if you want to carry neurotransmitters, say, from the cell body to the nerve terminus, you use kinesin because it's going to carry vesicles to the plus end of these microtubules at the nerve ending. And if you have to carry empty vesicles back in order to pick up more neurotransmitter in the cell body, then the motor protein that is used is dynein. The main take-home message here is that dynein carries vessels back to the cell body where they can be recycled and refilled with a neurotransmitter, and kinesin carries the neurotransmitter-filled vesicle in the other direction to the axon terminus, or the synapse, at the nerve ending. Now, what's shown here for a nerve cell is also true for other cells. In the case, for example, of a pigment cell, the pigments will be carried by dynein in one direction and kinesin in the other, depending on whether the cell has to darken or lighten, say, in the skin of a chameleon. Dynein is also attached to microtubules in cilia and flagella, and also in spindle fibers of mitosing or meiosing cells, where they allow one microtubule, or paired microtubule complex as shown here, to walk along or slide along another. 